Hi, I'm Yanni Spiritus, a graduating mechanical engineering major at Georgia Tech, and the research project I proposed for the fall 2021 semester, for which I was granted a Presidential Undergraduate Research Award to conduct, was to configure optimum strut load sensors for real-time suspension metric monitoring on the Auto Rally Team's one-fifth scale Baja Rally Truck, with the purpose of helping derive ideal spring coil stiffnesses and otherwise optimizing vehicle stability. After many ponderous hours of scouring force sensors, accelerometers, angular displacement sensors, and linear displacement sensors, I actually finally landed on linear slide potentiometers that I had encountered for previous VIP work that I did with the Retrofuturistic Hardware team. In addition to their high travel to length ratio, which makes them very space efficient, these potentiometers turned sensors are lightweight, highly cost effective, and relatively easy to assemble and disassemble with respect to both pinout and mounting. Once I had determined which sensor to use, I then had to design the parts that would mount the sensor to the strut. And while design considerations of safety, assembly, maintenance, and mechanical strength were prioritized, the geometry of the parts quickly became too complex and tolerances too small for most 3D printers at Georgia Tech. I consulted externally with Paliproto, a 3D printing shop in Kennesaw, which gave me an outstanding consultation regarding material selection and geometric tweaks that would make the design more rigid under the pressure of all the movement of the attached parts. They pointed me toward their marked forged machine that was precise enough across prints and used rigid enough material to meet my rigidity and tolerance requirements. They even printed me out a test piece that I could pick up, go back to the lab with, and measure for geometric validation before I sent in my revised part designs for a final print, and they did it all at a very reasonable price. All right, so now let me explain uh, how I use these four potentiometers, which are the same as what is mounted, just without the breakout board. How I use these four to tune my roll and pitch equations. From the left to right being back left, front left, back right, front right, for calculations. So basically, so let's say now, right, I'm reading negative nine-ish degrees of roll, right, because then back, uh, back left, depressed, so the roll is negative, and the pitch is slightly positive, right, because the front end's above horizontal. Now, if I put both left down, depressed, then the whole vehicle's like this. So you have a lot of negative roll, but basically zero pitch either way, right? Then you can do the same both ways. Right now it's uh, having, you know, lo very low level noise around zero because of its active averaging, but you can do the same for both of the right. You can depress both of the right. So essentially that's a lot of positive roll, no pitch, right? Or you can say both of the front are depressed, right? So then you get negative pitch and negligible roll. So to demonstrate the efficacy and low signal to noise ratio of this sensory subsystem, I have hooked up the roll in pitch outputs to my laptop screen, as you can see here. And now I'm going to demonstrate. So I'm depressing the entire backside to imbue some pitch into the system. You should be able to see it there. Uh, red signal is pitch, blue signal is roll. So I depress the entire front side. Again, you might get some uh, little bit of undulation from roll because, of course, I'm a human. I can't excite the system perfectly in an isolated way. So, I'm going to go all the way to the right side. All right? Okay. And all the way to the left. Now, roll is a more sensitive equation than pitch is, but you can still see a high signal to noise ratio for both. So one more capability that I've added to the auto rally test thread is the ability of the user to perform a higher fidelity maintenance on the vehicle through knowing more precisely when to and when to not add shock fluid to the struts. So basically what shock fluid does is it makes sure that the spring doesn't Expand completely and suddenly. So basically, when disturbed, it eases back to ride height. And that 
easing back is scientifically referred to as damping. Now, there is an optimum damping constant for which the system will return the quickest to steady state or regular ride height. Now, you can actually derive that, which I have done as well, through knowing the mass of the system and knowing the spring constant, which we have now through better instrumentation and therefore better reverse engineering of the existing suspension system optimized. So knowing the decrement of damping, theoretically, you can now take a single struts response to disturbance, plot that in Arduino, export that to MATLAB, where you can then run a natural exponential fit. Get a equation of A times E raised to the negative X times T. That X is the decrement. Now, if the decrement is actually less than what's uh, the theoretical ideal, you know that the system is then underdamped. It's not returning as quickly as it could to steady state. Therefore, more shock fluid is needed. However, if it's actually too much, and the system is then too, therefore too rigid, you can actually bleed the shock fluid to return it to optimum uh, performance. Future considerations for the project are these. One, the desired maximum compression and roll values were derived using a rule of thumb to use only 25 to 35% of a coil spring's available travel under normal conditions, which I consider to top out at the peak vertical G-force experienced while cornering. Now, since this Baja truck doesn't normally experience as much vertical variation in track profile as other rally trucks, which I believe contributes to the rule of thumb's conservative nature, future users could probably get away with letting a higher percentage of the travel be used up by normal conditions and, in doing so, safely address the ride comfort considerations of the onboard electronics. However, I cannot confidently give an estimate of the extent to which the rule of thumb can safely be relaxed without conducting track testing. 2. The subsystem I've created is separate from the rest of the auto rally test bed from a software standpoint. I have been able to launch ROS nodes and have them interact with the DUE, despite its lack of an IP address, using MATLAB's ROS toolbox and Arduino hardware support packages. However, completed integration with the rest of the auto rally platform would be the next step for this subsystem, but only after thorough validation. Because, due to time constraints, I was not able to test everything as thoroughly as I would like prior to full deployment, though preliminary testing has been very promising. Overall, I've had an amazing time this semester working with the auto rally system once again. I have found this incredibly fulfilling. Challenging at times, frustrating at times, but in the end, it's always great to see a subsystem come to fruition. I wish I had more time to work on integration. However, the full-time job that I am starting in the spring is actually quite Ross heavy. So I will use this Dewey and potentiometer setup as a launching point for future experimentation. I hope future students utilize the diagnostic capabilities that I've added to the test bed and continue to realize the auto rally system's fullest potential. Finally, I would like to extend my gratitude to Dr. Paniotis Chiotras and my graduate mentor, Jason Gibson, for supporting me through the process.